Hey guys, and welcome back to the 411, your favorite wellness hub. I'm so excited to introduce today's episode because we have our very first guest. I can't believe I'm saying this. We have a guest on the 411, the creative director and founder of Nobu Pilates, the Pilates queen herself, ranked number one at Tatler, Marsha Lindsay. Oh my Round God, of what? A- ah! I feel like a queen. <laughs> Marsha, Lindsay. I mean, like, if you know me, you know I love Pilates and I love Nobu. I literally was talking to my TikTok community, like, I've discovered Nobu Pilates and I'm going to go. So the fact that the the brains and the beauty behind the whole operation is sitting on my couch is just like, Mwah, chef's kiss. So, so kind. Uh, I'm really honest, like, honestly honored to be on it. Oh, um, that makes me so happy. To even be considered uh, for, for pod worthy <laughs> guests. Shit. Very popular. It's insane. So oh, I love that. So I love much. that. Oh, no worries. Well, <laughs> let's just hop right into it. I just start with your background. Like, were you always involved with athletics? You know what I mean? Mm. Movement and specifically how you got involved in Pilates. Yeah. I mean, as a kid, I've always been active. Mm. So my parents um, were part of the military, moved around a lot. And mm. a lot of their ethos was to get me into sports. One, to because it's healthy and movement yeah. to stay strong, but two, yeah. it was another way to sort of connect with other kids and yeah. communities. Like moving around, you had to to make new friends all the time. So I'd be in the hockey, I'd be on the track. Oh wow, so every sport. 100, yeah, 100 meter, 200 meter, 400 meter long jump. Um, I would do Kung Fu and kickboxing. That was my biggest thing from the oh, age wow. of six years old. Um, I was doing that until I was 19 competitively. Oh wow, yeah. that's really impressive. So yeah, I mean, yeah, the girl could throw a punch. <laughs> <laughs> don't mess with Marsha. Don't mess with her. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've always been into fitness. Mm. Um, and then as I got into my adulthood, that drops off a bit. You know, you find socializing, you find, of course. you know, going out to parties and having fun and that dropped off a bit. But I was on my search to find my career. I had no idea. What I was mm. No idea. I was trying everything and cancelling things out. And it was my dad that was just like, you've always been into fitness. Like, that's yeah, why you shout out dad. Go. We love yeah, when parents that are supportive. Still wasn't it. Oh, he, really? Really? <laughs> no, that still didn't do it. Like, I now look back and I'm like, yeah, he did tell me. It was, so I had a kickboxing injury. I was in a competition. My ankle got injured and I had physio. And it was recommended that to continue with my fitness, mm-hmm. that I could do Pilates because it wouldn't impact it. So mm. I went and booked a session. Okay. Second session I did, I signed up to oh, do wow. the instructor course. And I was like, this is it. I, I found it. Really? So it's just like a spark. It just came to you. Inst. It's like love at first sight. Wow. That's okay. the only time I've experienced it. Yeah. Unfortunately, not with a person yet. But yeah. With with that. Yeah. yeah. Pilates is my love. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> I feel like you kind of touched on it a little because Pilates. Mm. Correct me if I'm wrong. Originally started as a, a physiotherapy. No. So that's a good point. So there's a lot of sort of stories around how it started Mm. but joseph pilates he was a prisoner of war and during that time he did sort of manufacture this movement based as part of some of the rehab okay wounded soldiers but he was already interested in in movement Mm. and how animals moved babies moved uh, and how the 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 anatomy of the body uh, and longevity so he's always been he was always that mindset Mm. um so it was developed very much in what you in what you say um but yeah it was the equipment was founded sort of using the mattress springs during that time oh wow and that's how you know like the big yeah it is still in the reformer yeah and you can see those archival pictures it's insane that's crazy i never thought of it that way but it is still so similar yeah wow Mm. wow good to know (laughs) fun fact of the day (laughs) Um, I feel like I just want you to define what exactly Pilates is because I know there are a lot of Pilates skepticals out there. People always (laughs) swear it's not either a hard workout, a real workout, like Mm -hmm. the amount of just chatter I've heard when I say like, I'm very loyal to Pilates and it's a workout I love, but I feel like people don't actually understand what it does because Mm -hmm. it's like, you're not sweating. You're not like running 10 miles. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or it's compared to yoga. Yoga is a great workout. But it's it's very different. Yeah. Exactly. There's similarities I get, but it's not. So yeah, I, I view Pilates as a full, complete workout of the body, whether it's strength, mobility, Mm. or flexibility. It's doing all of those things. You're centering the mind, you're working on your breath. And all of these elements are coming together to create this sort of perfect symphony of movement, mind-body connection. Mm. I think it's really important to remember that it is a workout. It's not a meditation. You are supposed to be present. You're supposed to take it away and use it in your daily life, whether mm. that's sort of 
correcting that, that sort of repetitive motion of like using your mouse at mm. work that could impact your shoulder to have an awareness of where your posture should be. Mm. Um, it's giving empowerment to each body to understand what's going on and how to move better forever. Mm. That's how I view it. No, agreed. So I'm not just training for myself aesthetically, which does matter to me. I'm mm. not going to lie about that. But I'm I'm definitely more training myself for the future, Marsha. Mm. In the 50s, 60s, 70s, I want to move forever. I want to know that I can get off, stand up off the couch without doing that oof yeah noise yeah or you know getting in and out of the shower safely just yeah. know that i can move forever yeah. yeah have studies literally been shown that when people do pilates throughout their life in their mm-hmm. older years they are more flexible and more yeah. equipped with their body and that happens instantly oh wow okay um there's a really nice uh saying that joseph pilates says 10 sessions you'll see the difference 20 sessions you'll feel the difference Mm. 30 sessions you've got a completely different body Mm. um and that's just because you're connecting to smaller muscle groups that you don't fire up in the gym or in in sort of normal regular movement patterns you're connecting to those smaller ones to work with the rest of Mm. your body Mm. so yeah it's been shown especially with athletes like their performance from one part of their journey next to like adding pilates into Mm. their repertoire is elevated beyond oh totally totally yeah. i have a cousin who just committed to playing professional american football yeah. as his job but the team's been mandatory to take on pilates and i just thought it was the funniest thing because again yeah. i was always made fun of for doing pilates and yeah. then i'm like wow look at they're making these like huge guys you know what i mean yeah. do that workout even the nba player i even saw in the brooklyn nets the nba team mm. it's mandatory for them to do pilates and so, so i feel like there's definitely become yeah incredible to see but i also feel like there's a lot more research and it's becoming a lot more publicized of mm. the importance of pilates yeah um especially to prevent injury and make yeah. sure your muscles are as strong as can be so 100 percent. i also think that there's a lot of um I think people are scared because yeah. you see the equipment and it looks crazy. Yeah, that. and it is hard. <laughs> it's very, it's a very hard workout. Yeah, because you walk past the window and it looks serene. You can't see anything. But yeah, actually, internally, what's yeah. firing up? It's like. It's no, you're lot. shaking, yeah. The tremble of truth. Yeah, the tremble that. of truth. <laughs> <laughs> I know that too well. Yeah, but I think it's important to know that it's really inclusive. Like, it doesn't matter if you've got an injury. It doesn't mm. matter if you're going through pregnancy or been through pregnancy. No matter your age, gender. Anyone can do it. Mm. Everyone's going to find it challenging, and that's the way it's supposed mm. to be. Mm. Super inclusive. So there are a lot of skeptics to Pilates. So I just yeah. want to understand, what do you do to encourage people to try it out, mm. commit to it? Some have tried it. They're not too sure. They're on the fence. They yeah. wanna. You want to see them do more classes. What are like? What do you do? I. That's a great question because when I created the No Boot Pilates concept, that's exactly what I was thinking. Mm. So you know, I've got power precision. Yeah. Skills. Yeah. And I recognize that everybody has their own their own sort of taste when it comes to workouts. You've got the hip people, mm. you've got the yoga people, you've got people who enjoy calisthenics, whatever. So I created each theme around how somebody relates to fitness mm. outside of Pilates and finding their way in. Mm. So I know somebody That's who very loves smart. right, I know somebody who likes high intensity, likes to get sweat on, is gonna enjoy power mm. because they get that feeling instantly of okay, we're energized, Mm. we're going to move through this, but we're still connecting to Pilates. I know someone who's a yogi or a mindful mover is going to love a pure because it's not that that you're not working out as hard, but it's more sort of connecting a lot of elements and finding the foundation. Precision, you might be somebody who enjoys a PT session, like reps, sets, supersets, all Mm. that sort of stuff. That's what that was designed on. So by design, you find your way in. Mm. But my hope is that once you trust us and enjoy the method, that you start exploring the other elements and then you move okay you're pa- you like power and you like high energy but maybe you need the pure yeah yeah balance it's all about balance yeah, you need to work on centering and that's it and breathing yeah so my idea is that they'd explore the whole thing that's Amazing. how i created maybe blood oh i love yeah. that i love it and just check it out just try it especially <laughs> if you're in london and you've never tried pilates you need to go to noble pilates and just thank me later i need you just to be it, ah! and just be I'll stand at the front door and be like, you, have you signed up for Pilates? <laughs> sign it up, sign it up, because it's so worth it. So we know you're a Pilates queen, but I want to know you, how you're a wellness queen. What other mm-hmm. habits do you have in your life? First and foremost, yeah. I, obviously you do Pilates. Do you do other workouts? I know you spin. Yes. But in addition, do you do... I love spin. Uh- <laughs> um, yeah, and it's nuts because I do it six to seven days a week. Yeah. Oh, you like love got, spin. I love spin. I've got a Peloton at home. I go to a spin studio. I like the community. I like my Peloton. Oh, wow. Yeah, so spin is like... In addition to Pilates. 
Yeah, do you know what? Spin is my meditation. I can't oh. think about anything else. Mm. Can't think about Pilates, emails, mm. when I'm in spin. Mm. It's my version. I love it, of meditation. Mm. Pilates, every day I feel like without that, I'm nothing. Mm. No, totally. <laughs> it makes everything else stronger. I gym three times a week. Okay. Um, sometimes a bit more if I've got time, but three times definitely set. So it'll be lower body, upper body, and then a, a sort of more global exercising but I do like to lift weights and mm. I like to go quite heavy mm. um, and I know that Pilates definitely fundamentally helps with that and my mm. knowledge of that me- means I'm moving correctly yeah but I do sometimes as well like to have a PT because I like to, to make sure I'm doing it correctly what else do I do I walk to and from work oh incredible how long is that walk I live in Battersea okay and obviously Nobu is in uh, Marlborough so that's 55 minutes okay wow yeah. every day Wow. And I absolutely love it. Again, it's where I listen Guys, to I need to do a lot more work here. <laughs> I'm like, I thought oh, I was like fit and I'm like, what? Like, this one again is definitely a mindful thing. Yeah. Like, I listen to podcasts. Yeah. Anytime I'm walking and I can just sort of relax and enjoy London a little bit. Mm. Um, I like boxing. Oh, cool. Yeah. But I try and maybe I'll do that once or twice a month because okay. sometimes I find I go too hard and yeah but yeah i like to mix it up i like dancing as well i have a dance coach every saturday oh wow so you literally do it all yeah i just like moving i just i'm like trying to figure out how you find time to do all this because again i'm like thinking about my schedule and i'm like you definitely have a lot more to manage but how do you organize like how do you handle time management doing all that fight for fitness (laughs) so like you know my my days at work are crazy Mm. i wear a lot of hats Mm. at work um so when it comes to fitness, it's a non-negotiable. When those things are set, if I need to leave the building, mm, I'm you doing will. that. Yeah, yeah. Because I will crumble without looking yeah. after my physical, which is connected to my mental mm, wellness. So mm. that's a non-negotiable. For of me. course, of course. <laughs> yeah. It's the same with your. Are you pretty strict with eating habits? Or are you pretty? Yeah, I try not to get too hot up on it because mm. I enjoy food. The weekends, I will do whatever I want. I eat everything. Mm overindulge if I need to yeah. have my cocktails in the week I do like to eat clean I like the feeling of eating clean yeah. I like the structure yeah. I like to know that I'm getting like the right nutrients yeah. to sort of support sort of workouts and daily work life so yeah in the week I eat clean and depending on like how I'm feeling sometimes I like to eat to put on more muscle sometimes I like to trim down it depends on like what cycle I'm going through mm. but I try not to be too hard on myself mm. with food because there's so much other stuff no, of course, to try. Yeah. How do you know? Do you have a nutritionist? Like, how do you what? How do you have your knowledge of like what food provides? And yeah, I mean, I used to work for somebody because I used to work for quite a well-known brand called Equinox. Okay, and they had all of these specialists, and I was really lucky to have PTs and nutritionists and osteopaths to like really mm. educate and ask a ton of questions. Mm. I probably really annoyed them, but I've just found my own way with it and my own rhythm. And as I get older, things change, so I have to tweak and evolve with okay. what's happening in my body. Yeah. So at the moment, what's working for me in the week is juice cleansing. Okay. I've just done a three day in a row, which I'll do as a reset just for sort of the gut area. Do that every four months, I'd say. Mm. Been doing that for a while, and then. On a regular, on a Tuesday and a Thursday, I like to do juice cleanse days. Mm-hmm. Just again as a reset. Yeah. Reset the body freshly. Like And for me, um, so now I'm 38, mm. and just things have changed since, I, since 35 to 38. I've noticed weight management has just shifted, mm. and that just seems to work for me to keep things regulated. Mm. But I'm always ready for the next two, five, six years yeah. to change again and again. Yeah. So I change and I flex with how I feel. Oh, amazing. And I yeah. feel like that's only natural. Every body, like, I'm 27 and my body's changed within the last three years. Yeah. And I thought maybe it was, like, a hormonal hormonal thing. But yeah. I really do, do think it is, like, getting older and, yeah. like, the body changes. The body yeah. just does change. You know yeah. what I mean? It's especially as simple as that. Especially for women. Yes, yeah. yes. Especially for women. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Ugh, shout out women. <laughs> it's tough for us. It is tough. It's not tough. I would never change it for the world. But I think I've always had, like, a really intense period. And, like, mm-hmm. I've just always had the classic female hormonal issues that yeah. a female can have and sometimes I'm like it would just be nice to like yeah <laughs> go to work and not have to worry about you know what I mean yeah. but it is the way it is but I feel mm. like that's why I also love Pilates because when I found it I actually found that nothing used to work with my period like mm-hmm. I saw a doctor I used to get like injections to yeah. help balance everything out and now I'm a com- I'm not like crazy with it but I'm so anti-injection so anti anything extra entering my body because yeah. I found when I same like you I had to 
I didn't really have a nutritionist, but I had a lot of resources who were nutritionists and I would like literally yeah. badger them with questions and then explore and experiment things on my own. And I found that paired with Pilates specifically, like not mm. even yoga per se, Pilates, because I think my body needs the strengthening and the structure element. Yeah. Completely like don't have period cramps at all. And it's like the craziest thing because of course I can't, not a scientist or a doctor, so I can't really prove why yeah. that combination did what it did for me, but I definitely anyway, think there's like, yeah, for you. no, it did. And there's definitely yeah. a correlation between like what you're fueling your body with and how yeah. you're fueling your body and yeah. everything that's happening inside the body. So, yeah. and I've never give strict rules. Cause I know that sometimes as well, especially in this day and age, people like to look to someone as a pillar. Yeah. So if they say it, then it must be right. Yeah. For me, I've done enough exploring and trying things that didn't didn't work for mm. me. I've taken the bits that work for yes, me. Yes. Yeah. And I can share how it's gone for of me. Of course. But that might not work for you and that's okay. Yeah. We're different people. No, of course. But yeah, it's important to listen and grow but then really edit what works for you. Yeah, of course, of course. I agree with that. I feel like it's yeah. all about balance too because we I don't know about you, but I even had different stages where I was like, this is the only diet I'm following and that was like all I ate because if I if I commit to something, I can mm. very much do it and it wasn't a fun diet per se, but I think it gave me, I'm not even going to say the results. Yeah. It convinced me I was getting those results. But yeah. me today is like, I feel like I'm the happiest with the way I look and the way I feel. And yeah. like you said, it took a lot of experimenting of seeing like, what is my complete foundation of like non-negotiables? You know what I mean? How yeah. much water I have, what my morning breakfast looks like, my lunch. Mm -hmm. But then on top of that, because like you said, you need cheat days. I'm from New York. There's yeah. no way we don't have a cheat day. Like, <laughs> I grew up, it's so crazy to think about because I grew up going out to eat more than my family ever cooked because there's just too many options there. Amazing. And so <laughs> it's just like, it's so funny when I used to do those, like this is all I'm eating. Because in my head, me today is like, Kiki, the, how long did you think that was going to last for? Like, <laughs> was it going to last when it doesn't last? But, but you're right. I think the key point of that is like, take time, experiment, see what works for you, and mm -hmm. you really gotta be in your own journey. Exactly, and just be ready to change with yeah. your body as yeah. your journey continues. Totally, totally. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this last question is a very kiki question, but <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys know this, but in a recent interview, Marsha said she had an eight-step skincare routine, and there is no way I was not gonna touch on that because oh, you already know, gosh. skincare queen here, we have to talk about skincare. So please, first, what kind of skin do you have? Oh, it's changed. Okay. So I used to have, very oily and I hated it at the time and I'm really stupid for hating it yeah. because I would give anything to have it back. But now I, ha I it's combination, so it's oily in this area, yeah. dry on my cheeks, okay. Um, okay. which I have been told like it's quite, it needs more hydration here. Mm. Um, and then here there is like, there's something different happening, oh, I haven't figured it out yet, mm. <laughs> but there's it can be combination oily to dry. Okay, okay. Haven't figured out why my neck. Like this I do specifically. Know that this is yeah. Okay. This I feel is connected to nutrition stuff. And okay. Like my allergies. So okay. If my allergies flare up. This gets dry. Okay. So since what you've read. Yeah. I've then got more curious, and I'm going to like see like professionals, like yes. getting medical facials. Yeah. And they're like, you don't need to do all that. Yeah, yeah. Which is annoying because a little bit of it, I really. It's just, fun. No, like, it's. I am OCD as hell. And I absolutely love sitting there and doing all this stuff and knowing that it's gonna make me look 12, right? Yeah. So it used to be eight steps. However, they really just made me think, okay, it's definitely about the quality. Yeah. Fine. Um, and your skin's doing well. It actually, it can be a little bit more. Mm. You don't have to put a hundred things on. Mm. So I've got two routines. Okay. In the morning, and so like, it's really interesting you say, how do you like view wellness? It's the same as skincare. like. My whole morning is a wellness routine, not just skincare. Mm. So I wake up, I do um, the red light, I've okay. got the art. Yeah. So I yeah. lie under that for 20 minutes. Okay. That's as soon as my alarm gets up. Get up, go to spin class, come back, apple cider vinegar. So mm. what I put in me is important. Mm. Then I use my new face toning. Oh routine. yes, oh yes. Snatched. We know new face over here. Snatched, snatched. snatched. No, literally, snatched. snatched. Up. Yeah. Okay, like, so <laughs> no, it, it like snatches you. <laughs> it's snatches. It's incredible. Um, in the morning, I like to use a face wash, and then, um, actually, I've been trying. I've experimented with road. Oh, really? Yeah. What are your thoughts? I actually, 
I, it really agrees with my skin. Yes, I know same, same. Different. No, of course. And that's the thing with skincare. It's like so tough. Yeah. Specifically because I make content around skincare where people yeah. are like, you said it was going to work. It didn't work. And I was like, I never said it was going to work for you. <laughs> yeah, I said, yeah. I have, I always preface, like I have dry skin and yes. this is what I'm using. That's been working. Yeah. And it all is, I mean, skincare really at its core is a science. Yeah. And so like not everything's going to work for everyone, but it makes me happy to hear that it works for you. Cause I, I just love them so much. People always think it's connected to how much you spend mm, and, and it's not, this is a great affordable brand. Totally. That just honestly, my skin just felt great. It no, felt I love like that. Good skin. Which product did you use? I used, I used all of it. So I used the serum. I used, oh, I actually did get the, the milk. Yeah. 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 Uh, and the moisturizer. Oh, amazing. And the peptide lip. Amazing. No, it's a, it's a, no, yeah. I swear by, I did, today's skincare routine is courtesy of Road. From head to toe, like, so not head to toe, prom- from the I'm whole not routine. Like plugging it, but no, like- me either, me either, guys. Bro did not pay for this conversation. We're just like being honest here, yeah. but no, it's true. It's, it's amazing. That's I think why cool. people don't expect that to be amazing is because it's like founded by Haley, who's like this celebrity and st- like, historically and statistically celebrity founded brands are just not good because they're not involved. Yeah. And I feel like she's done a good job of actually being involved as a part of the process and yeah. really, letting her name you yeah. know what i mean not be tainted by the reputation of it in the sense that she's like no these are going to be good products but yeah. again it goes back to it has to be a good product for you it can't be a good because i know people with oily skin who it doesn't resonate with but yeah. i have dry skin completely dry like there are no oily elements yeah. so it's cool to hear that you have combination and that also works for you yeah really well i love that um so that every day and then i as i'm sort of i do do you know the compression leggings so mm-hmm. you can strap these boots on and it's like a burger Oh, the big trip. black ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's air compression yeah. to sort of do lymphatic drainage on you. So I had, I put those on in the morning before, this is all like it before 6 a.m. What time is it? 6 a.m. before 6 a.m.? What time do you wake up? So I'm sorry, I go to my spin at 6 a.m. and then I come back home at 7 ish. And that, this is when this is happening. And, and what time do you wake up? Five. Is this every morning, religiously? Um, yeah, my brain wakes up at five anyway. Oh, okay. So you're not like tired. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. My mind is buzzing. Oh, really? Times. Yeah. It's, wow. It's a curse and a strength. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> uh, so compression boots on and then one one skin under yeah. eye yeah. I like the blue cryo ones and then we're off to work after we've had all the vitamins yeah I love that <laughs> I love that I feel like what's scary is I heard all that and wasn't like no that's too much I'm like no no that sounds about right because there are different steps to go for different things and yeah but I just find it enjoyable. Yeah, me too. It's a mental health. For me, how yes. you describe like working out is how I feel about skincare. Like I'm not putting products in my face half the time because I my skin needs it. Yeah. But because it's like the mental side of me is like finally you're in your happy place. You can mm-hmm. just like it's therapeutic, you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. it really just does something <laughs> deeper than topical, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. That's so good. Wait, can you touch on do you want to talk about your nighttime routine or oh nighttime, a little easier because yeah. Um, but I like to do Sunday Riley. There's this blue lunar oil, mm. which I really enjoy. It just seems to work on my skin. And then they also have something called Good Jeans, okay. which is um, it's helps with sort of exfoliation. Okay, cool. Um, but it's very gentle. You yeah. can leave it on overnight. Yeah. Because my skin can flare up really easily. Yeah. The other sort of AHA stuff can be a bit sensitive to it. So I do that. And that's about it. Oh, That's cool. pretty simple at night. No, I love that. I love yeah. that. You have a great skincare routine. Thank I love you. that. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about how you got involved with Nobu and how you transitioned from being obviously a Pilates attendee mm. to then like, we know how you went from an, an attendee to an instructor, but now from being an instructor to running and creative directing Nobu Pilates, like how did you make that happen? Yeah, I think <sighs> it's been a long journey, you know, my love. I've been an instructor for 11. It's coming up to 12 years now. Mm. So it's one of the, I think it's that perfect blend of luck and hard work. Mm. It took me so long to find what I loved. Mm. And so I found what I loved and after that it just went up. I was an instructor, I was a manager at Equinox. I was then the teacher trainer for Equinox. So I took okay, well. people through the, the training program for a year. Then I was the area manager for Equinox and then COVID hit. And I love Equinox actually. And if nobody hadn't come along, I was very, very happy there. But it's just one of these calls that you get and I was like you can't turn it down you can't turn it down and my name my my name was recommended and given given to somebody I have a call during COVID I thought it was a joke (laughs) I was like there's a no reason sushi or no reason and Pilates and they're like yeah we're building this new hotel um and we want to take a step into wellness wait so Noble Portman wasn't a hotel at that point no oh wow it was still under construction oh really so that hotel's only two years old yes 
Yeah. Really? That's yeah. crazy. I did not know that. Wow. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, bonkers, right? Yeah. So there was a lot of new stuff going on for them. Yeah. This was a big thing, new thing for me, and they've never stepped into wellness before. Mm. But they, at first I was like, I don't know. They said, come see the space. So when I saw the space, you've seen the space. Yeah. So it was already pre-designed before you saw it and everything. Yeah. Like okay. That, the, the building was almost ready to go before they approached me with the concept. Okay. Okay. Um, and I walked in and I was like, God. Yeah. You're no. like, can't say no. <laughs> and, I, and you have to go see it. There are no other places no, no, no. like this. No, truly. And I've been to different ones. Mm-hmm. in what the u.s mm-hmm. and also all over the uk and there's i've literally never seen a studio that looks like this like it's a state of the art stunning it's crazy like natural light everywhere yes normally when you go to a into a hotel for fitness space you're going down it's space, dark you're going up and yeah a terrace yeah it was a yes it was yeah. a yes 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 they were like you've got full creative control on this wow. we don't know what we're doing in this but this aspect we can support you and i said yes and at first i was like oh my god what have i done here like i never launched a brand i but when you love something, yeah. as soon as you allow yourself just to, to be in it and be free, mm. the ideas just flew out. Mm. Mm. I didn't know that I wanted to create my own brand and here we are. Yeah. It all just happened. Uh, so it's been a big learning curve. Yeah. I have made some mistakes, but I've learned from mistakes and we built together. We had a flooding when we opened. No way. We had a mass COVID um, incident where we had to shut down for a week because all the team got COVID. Oh, wow. I've been through it with yeah. this brand, um, yeah. but just to see where we are now is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Wait, so that I feel like you already touched on it. Like, how did you, you've never owned your brand before. You've never had a brand before. And no. then you're been given this brand by Nobu. Mm-hmm. To completely lead and then it's mm-hmm. during covid which is already adding complications to it but then you have so many things come up coming up you yep. said flood you said covid yep. let alone basic logistical things yeah how did you learn to overcome them fighting <laughs> every single day yeah if there was a problem i'm not i'm not leaving it without a solution mm. and you've it didn't matter if the solution didn't work try again mm. Um, and I've just built a resilience yeah. to not taking no for an answer. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I have been faced with no's before. Yeah. Um, but I just know that I'm right. Yeah. I yeah. have an instinct. You're like, not it. today. <laughs> and I'm like, I know my brand. Yeah. I know myself. I know yeah. this can work. And it's always worked out. It's great now as well because you have to build that respect. Like, yeah. As much as Novi approached me, this was a new space for Completely, them. completely. So I did have to show them what I've got. Mm. But they had to put a lot of trust in me, so... No, of course. I feel like respect is earned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In any (laughs) setting, you have to, like, command it. Even when people trust you, Mm. you need to give them something, which is vice versa. I think about that with people. Like, even if you're like, oh, you'd be great. If the person doesn't prove themselves to be great in what you ask them to do, then you are going to test those boundaries and test those limits, but that's incredible. That's incredible. We've been a great partnership. Yeah. Um, I couldn't couldn't be more fortunate. Yeah. Um, and I hope they feel the same way about me. I'm pretty sure they do. Oh, they definitely do. I mean, <laughs> again, number one Pilates cl- uh, studio at Tatler 2023. So like, they're like, that award alone is just no, incredible. Insane. Incredible. When we got that news, I screamed. Oh, I that's screamed. so exciting. I oh. couldn't believe it. Yeah, there's probably a recording. I'll put it on my Instagram. No, you should. You should. I mean, I feel like because like you said, it's so much hard work, especially when you're creating your own brand. And it's the kind of brand where there's not really alkaloids per se around it you know what i mean of course you have guests coming of course you have people that are like i had a great class but there's not constant reminders that you're doing a great job yeah what you're doing is different what you're doing is unique you honestly are innovating the times you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so it's really cool when people recognize that and give you credit where credit is due thank you so much yeah it's been it's been incredible and nobu is the brand yeah, they are. What a, they, they, I mean, it can't get better than Nobu. I can't tell you that. No, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Full transparency, like, I fully reached out to Nobu because I go to Nobu Pilates and was like, can we celebrate the launch of this podcast with you guys? And when you guys said yes to that, I, I screamed. That, talk about, you got Tatler, I got Nobu. I ran to him and was like, they said yes, they said yes. And he was like, they said yes? And I was like, I know, even my mom, she was like, they said yes. I was like, okay, all this doubt is a little concerning from everyone, but yes, but... Because you really are the best, you know what I mean? And it's mm. it's the whole experience. It's the elegance of it, the cleanliness of it, you know what I mean? Down yeah. to the basics, but also the actual workout is really just incredible. Every instructor yeah. you have, have you personally, did you vet every instructor and oh, find yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you can tell. They're all incredible. I'm like, there's not one. like <laughs> The minimums you have to have as qualifications to get a job at Nobu is insane. Because yeah. there's a lot of mat instructors, a lot of reformer instructors, that's great. But the people who know all the equipment, the chairs, the balance. Yeah, yeah. There's 
16 pieces of equipment that yeah. people don't know about, they need training on that. Yeah. And not everybody wants to go through that. For, I mean, that training can be 18 months. Oh, so. wow. And that's anatomy and that's learning how to look after any special case, cases, injury, pregnancy. They need that level. Yeah. So I need, need to know that it can look after anyone that comes through the mm. door. So, yeah, it's not easy. I know. Well, I've that got... makes me feel really good. I didn't know they were that. Yeah. Wow. They're incredible. Wow. But I think it's the way that they do it. Like, yeah. They present it in a way that's very digestible and it's not big headed. Yeah, exactly, you know I mean? exactly. No, it's not, and it's not overwhelming. They really mm. feel like a friend. I feel like I'm there being guided by a friend to still challenge myself, but also like, yeah. if I'm like, this is too much at the time, you're still encouraged and you still, yeah. you still feel safe. Working out should be a safe space because I think that's for a right. lot of people, it's just not at all and yeah. it's a really uncomfortable space. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you, do, you guys do an amazing that's job at making it feel really, like really aware yeah. of. Like, you feel so vulnerable sometimes in yeah. the workout environment and we want to change yeah. and make sure everybody feels accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Happy. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I feel like you all kind of already touched on it, but I definitely want to talk about like representation in the Pilates space mm. because I mean, even though there are two black girls here talking about Pilates, yeah. I would even argue it's not common to go to a class. Even when I was in New York, we went to Body Rock and um, your classes, not you specific, like Nobu mm. in general, I will say mm -hmm. I've seen the most representation. And when yeah. I say representation, I mean like black girls because that's what I'm looking for, yeah. but just diversity in general. So. Yeah are you taking avid steps to yeah. make that happen? Like, what are you doing? Those are meetings I have a lot just to make sure that, so it started for me with um, Nobu and this has been a learning. Mm. Instagram has been a great um, portal for people to reach out to me and voice these things. And it was as simple as someone saying, I didn't know black people did Pilates. No, that's what my mom says all the time. She's like, I literally don't know any black person who's yeah. besides you. And I'm like, no, they do, they do, but. My mind was blown. <laughs> But then also it quickly changed. I was like, okay, I can see why. Because yeah. when I look on Instagram for reference, yeah. you don't see no, not zero. that. Zero. You're not seeing that. So I instantly knew for on a personal level mm. that that needed to change for me. But it's also men in mm. Pilates. Mm. It's also different bodies in Pilates. Yes, yes. Um, really making sure that we're inviting everybody. And sometimes that's tap tapping into the influencer mm. community. Mm. Um, just to get them to host a class and like make it a friendly thing. And I don't want to force anything down someone's throat, but if you host a class and you love it and then you want to commit to the studio, mm. great. No, it's true. And then we're expanding our family, our community, our diverse, diversity at all times. Mm. That's so important to mm. me. It became probably more important than Pilates. Oh, wow. I love mm. that. I love that. You can, yeah. like I said, you can tell because the representation is there. Even when people try it, I was at a class maybe a few weeks ago and uh, two girls brought their mom and it was so funny yeah. because halfway the mom was like, uh-uh, I'm out of here. And she did <laughs> leave it. But I respected her so much for showing up and trying because yeah. I feel like a lot of moms don't try. And mm -hmm. I, even my mom, she had a really weird experience at a Pilates class where she basically was asked to leave the class because they didn't think she was like showing up the best way she should. And wow. I, or, I, I was not only, wow, I was annoyed because I was like, you don't know what I had to do to get this lady in the class yeah. to start off with and yeah. to then be not felt made to feel included and mm -hmm. i think just supported at the end of yeah. the day you just want to feel supported not only made me angry but i think kind of like it permeated or i guess perpetuates a yeah. narrative about pilates that it's this very like i mean if i'm being completely transparent like <laughs> yeah, skinny white girl right. sport you yeah. know what i mean and yeah. it's like and here's the opposite of that and then yeah. you're not making her feel included so yeah um, and the problem is you're that you never forget your first experience at all anything, right at and all i'm really sad to hear that your mom had that mm. um no, I'm bringing her to Nobu. She'll come, she'll come. With me, please. Okay, let me have a chance to change that. Because it's hard then, like, I've met so many people who are like, no, it's not for me. Yeah. And then, so I'm already faced with the barrier of convincing you to do Pilates, and then you've had that bad experience. Yeah. It's, this whole thing. But I'm never going to stop fighting to no. get those people in, because I know that they can love it and they can connect. And yeah. It's just they've had a sad experience. No, like, true. Like it's that. true. But I th <laughs> And I think simply by like, it's crazy how it works like this, but simply by seeing you, they might be more inclined to just join the class because again, it's just like representation yeah. and like in any setting, when someone sees someone who they connect with some way, somehow, mm -hmm. they're going to be more inclined to try and yeah. just give it a try and check it out. So. Yeah. And there's pros and cons to social media. I wasn't on Instagram when I was working at Equinox. One, I didn't need to be because mm. it's a members club. I didn't mm. need to sort of ex like sell myself in that way. Yeah. But also because I was a little bit self-conscious, I, I also saw those body image things yeah. and thought, do I fit that more? Yeah. I mean, I'm quite muscly and athletic yeah. and sometimes people even make compliments on my arms being too muscly for a while. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, God, on I'm social media or in person? Both. Oh my God. <laughs> I know I've had that. Um, oh my God, some nerve to someone just, to say that in person. That's actually crazy. People are crazy. They're like, oh, it's quite, you know, you're quite 
Emma, what does that mean? And also, what are you supposed to say back to that? Like, no, that's not, boundaries is a big thing. I'm like, I'm sure you've had to deal with it literally. Like I said, going from instructor Massively. to, tra- yeah. Yeah. How do you set those boundaries? Oh, I just have hard lines. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite, um, I've learned how to do this as well, mm. but I'm not scared if people would find it offensive if I've said what my boundary are. Mm. Is. Mm. Because that's your problem. That's, that's not your problem. That yeah. is their problem. I'm not doing it to upset you. I'm doing it to protect myself. Yeah. On the whole, most people get that. Yeah. I'm quite boundaried and this is my time. This is how much I want to share with you. Mm. I'm not going to talk about like relationships mm. or things like that on a social media pap- platform or whatever. I give what I want to give. Yeah. But I think I give a lot. No, you so, do. You do. Yeah. And there has to be, I think especially when you're working with social media, there has to be the boundary. Otherwise yeah. you'll lose yourself. Yeah. And once you lost yourself, I mean, we've seen with so many people, I've, I've seen at least with so many people of influencers that I love and who have, I feel like you see them giving so much of themselves mm-hmm. that they're bound to just get so wrapped up in it because there are no boundaries. And yeah. You have to have those boundaries. Yeah. Something for you. Yeah, exactly. Do it for you. So we're at that part of the episode where I allow my guests to ask me any questions, as long as they're one of the five pillars, as I'm your wellness insider. So handing it over to Marsha to give her question of the episode. I know I'm excited to to ask you this because like I said with skincare for me it's always been an exploration Mm -hmm. and an involvement not just with like the times and the products but with me my age and whatever so I want to ask you about especially with like the celebrity skincare thing that's happening at the moment Mm. what's your opinion on sort of celebrities jumping on this trend at the moment and if you were to have your own skincare line, what would the first product be? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> okay, so I've got two, two questions. Yeah, yeah, she, she, she's <laughs> cheating, she's cheating. No, the, so the first question, I think, I'm just gonna call it out. I think people realize there's a lot of money in skincare. It's not just a little bit of money, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, need multiple zeros behind your name kind of yeah. money. But I think what's amazing, what's sad is that a lot of people that celebrity skincare specifically are targeting are really young and gullible and so they're eating it all up and they're trying these skincare brands and these skincare companies that are just not good for their skin first of all if you're 16 you don't need a skincare routine like maybe and if you have acne and stuff yes but that's when you need to see a dermatologist and you need to get dermatology grade skincare you shouldn't be really following a celebrity skincare um but i think the beautiful side of today is there's so much honesty and research and yeah quite frankly, just calling people out on social media today. And luckily a lot of those people who are taking the skin cares are also involved in the skin or social media world. Yeah. So you know really quick if someone's brand is good, if yeah. it's not, it can be brought to life and taken away just that yeah, quickly. So true. Um, yeah, so I think it's just a matter of doing the research. Like I said, we talked on, we talked about Rhoda a little and I think what she does a good job of is showing that it's dermatology backed and that mm-hmm. it's simple, you know what I mean? It's not super complex. I think a lot of these mm-hmm. celeb skincare brands have so many things involved in them yeah. and a lot of them you just don't even see last and I think that's your number one telltale sign that it wasn't started <laughs> in the best interest you know what I mean yeah, because true. you have to have doctors behind you you have to have doctors fueling it it can't just be a social media mobilized brand it, yeah. because it's your skin it's like mm-hmm. you wouldn't see a I don't know celebrity doctor if you yeah. actually were properly sick you need a real yeah. doctor you know what I mean so yeah, yeah, yeah. um and then to your second question. Yes. This is interesting because I did want to start a skincare brand and I literally created an entire business plan for it. It was actually insane. Like so many months of my life were given to this brand that I just knew was going to come to life. And essentially what happened is I became more of a momentum started picking up as for content creation. And I started discovering how many brands there were out there. Mm-hmm. And the fact that the industry right now, I'm just going to say it needs no other brand, no other product. Like I, it's been a while since I seen a brand or a product that I was like, I've never seen that before. Like, yeah. no, yeah. but when I was doing how it, how long ago was this that you were like thinking about doing your own? uh like a year and a half ago okay. but i think there was also a lot of this is when i talk about growth and yeah. maturing because i think there was a lot of ego aside to it i think i also was like oh, okay like i i've been doing skincare and i'm thinking about my family i'm thinking about like generational wealth and changing i have this whole goal of being like i want to take my family from here to here and i think even in my head i knew like if you start your own brand and it does well yeah. you literally have the potential of like because showing your family money they've never seen before but yeah i'm so glad i didn't do it because 
I'm a true believer. You can make money doing anything. And it's not, there's no limit on how much money you can make. Once you're aligned with your highest good and you're doing your dream job, yeah. the money will come. Um, oh, I say that all the time. It will. It will. Because, <laughs> yes. because it does. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, but my first product was a lip product because I felt it was the product that teetered into both skincare and cosmetics. And so it would introduce me into both legs and you can make ones that are super hydrating, but also more cosmetic based to be glossy and dewy and there's no risk with lip products yeah people are not gonna trust you right away with putting like serums on their f- it or it takes a lot to build that trust yeah. whereas like think about if someone offered you a lip product you'll be like okay i'll take it but if someone offered you a serum you'd be like i'm sorry i'm not taking that you know what i mean so <laughs> yeah, yeah Ooh, that's what it was I gonna be that. yeah yeah maybe i might still do you it i think know. yeah yeah i feel like i might still create a product yeah. if i did a collaboration with a brand so if they're like kiki x i don't know a company or something yeah um Totally, I would do that because I still want to see the behind the scenes of like, I was obsessed with like the videos of seeing people go to the labs and seeing products made and I've always loved science in school and like seeing how all that was made. So there's definitely part, that part is still in my future, Mm -hmm. but it's just in a different way. So yeah, 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 yeah. you'll be the first, you'll be the first (laughs) to test it, but yeah. So thank you so much for coming on this episode. It was incredible having you and obviously you'll be seeing her again. This is not the... First, this is the first but not the last. So. Oh, I'm so excited. We're Thank so thankful. You yeah. For me. Yes. Come to the studio. Come to I will, the studio. I will. I'm going to show also, guys. I'm literally going to post. I post at the studio all the time anyway, but I'm also, I think I'm going to do a series where I actually show what the workout is like so yeah. people know. Love that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And see you next week. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, August 29th. There will never be a Tuesday, August 29th, 2023. Actually, there will never be this moment or this second or this hour. Be positive, be happy, drink your water, be joyful, be thankful, do not compare yourself to others. The goal in life is to define what makes you happy is you against you. 